The movie begins with the narrator talking about two kingdoms at war with each other. The only way the kingdoms can unite is if a great hero or villain unites them. One kingdom contains normal humans ruled by a terrible king. The inhabitants of this kingdom are envious of the prosperity of the other kingdom called the Moors, which is inhabited by all sorts of creatures in a natural environment. The narrator says the creatures in the Moors had neither king nor queen, but they lived in harmony because they trusted one another. A young Maleficent is in a nest high up at the edge of a tree. She uses magic to make two twigs, one shaped like a man and the other like a woman, dance together. Maleficent heals a broken branch, then proceeds to fly through the moors. Maleficent greets various creatures as she glides through, including some pig-like creatures who try to throw mud at her. She dodges the mud and laughs at the creatures. She also hails some fairies gliding on the water. Maleficent notices some creatures gathering, and lands to know what's happening. Three pixies, Knotgrass, Little, and Thistlewit, tell Maleficent the more border guards caught a human thief who stole some jewels from the pool. Maleficent hurries to the pool and finds two guards made from trees pointing wooden spears at some foliage. She tells the human to come out, but the human refuses, believing that the guards want to kill him. The human adds that the border guards look hideous. Maleficent tells the human, a young boy, that he's rude and assures the border guard that he's handsome. She asks the boy to come out and tell her his name. He tells Maleficent his name is Stefan. She orders him to give up the jewel. Stefan initially feigns ignorance, but upon Maleficent's insistence, gives it up. To his indignation, Maleficent returns the jewel to the pool. As she escorts Stefan out of the moors, he points to the castle in the distance and tells her he'll live in that castle one day. Before we go on like this video, smash the subscribe button and turn on that notification bell to get good luck for the whole day. Maleficent asks Stefan where he lives. He tells her that he lives in a barn. She innocently asks him if his parents are farmers, but Stefan tells Maleficent his parents are dead. She tells Stefan her parents are dead as well. Before Stefan leaves, he tells Maleficent he'll see her soon but she says it's not safe. He asks her if she'll be there if he comes again. She says perhaps. Stefan stretches out his hand for a handshake. As Maleficent takes his hand, she's hurt by the iron ring on his finger. Stefan asks what's wrong. She tells him that the iron hurts fairies. Horrified, Stefan takes off the ring and throws it away. He tells her he likes her wings before he finally leaves. Back in her nest that night, she stares at the stars and thinks about Stefan. Later, Stefan comes back to the moors, calling out repeatedly to Maleficent. When she appears, she tells him he has finally returned after these weeks. Stefan asks what she does for fun, so she takes him through the moors. She flies while he holds onto her leg. Their friendship blossoms as they grow, and on her 16th birthday, Stefan kisses her. He says it's a true love's kiss. Maleficent is all grown now. She flies through the moors at high speeds. Known as the strongest fairy in the moors, she's sitting on her cliff when she sees an army approaching, led by the king of the other kingdom. Just at the edge of the moors, the king stops the army to address them. The king says that they are at the edge of the moors, where no one dares venture because of the fear of the magical creatures that live within. The king commands his army to crush these creatures. As the army cheers the king's speech, Maleficent flies in front of the army and commands them to come no further. The king tells Maleficent he doesn't take orders from an elf with wings. She tells the king he's not a king to her. He commands his army to bring him her head. As the army advances towards Maleficent, she calls on the other creatures to stand with her. An army of tree-like creatures, just the border guards, rise out of the ground to fight with Maleficent. The battle's fierce. With Maleficent at the head of the charge, they take on the army. She knocks the king from his horse. As she lands to finish the job, the king pushes Maleficent away with his iron glove. It hurts her. The human army, seeing their king down, hastily retreat. Back at the castle, the king is on his sickbed. There are knights assembled in front of him. Stefan's also there as a servant. The king tells the assembled group he'll die soon, and he wants them to avenge him. 
The king tells the group that whoever kills Maleficent will be named king in his stead when he dies. When Stefan hears this, he sets out to the moors. As he arrives, he calls out to Maleficent and warns her of the king's plan. They spend the night together. Stefan offers Maleficent a flask to drink from. But when she does, she falls asleep soon after. We see that Stefan spiked the drink in the flask. At first, Stefan tries to kill sleeping Maleficent, but he can't. He decides to take off her wings instead. When Maleficent wakes up, she's distraught and in pain. She cries as she considers life without her wings. Stefan, who's on his way out of the moors, hears Maleficent's cry. He covers his face with a cloak and hurries out of the moor. When he arrives at the castle and presents Maleficent's wings to the king, the king tells him that he'll reward him, and Stefan says he hopes to be a worthy successor. In the moors, Maleficent picks up a twig and turns it into a staff to support her. She walks to a ruin to brood. As she's thinking, a raven flies in and looks directly at her. She chases the raven away. In the morning, the raven's caught in a net by a human and his dog. Maleficent, who's watching from a distance, rescues the raven by turning it into a man. The man and his dog escape, and the raven man asks Maleficent what she had done to his beautiful self. She asks him if he would have preferred to be beaten to death. The raven man apologizes, and Maleficent asks for his name. He says his name is Diaval, and in return for saving his life, he would be her servant. She tells Diaval she wants him to be her wings. Diaval, back in his raven form, visits the castle. Stefan and his wife are installed as king and queen. Diaval carries the news back to Maleficent, upsetting her. A greenish glow emits from her body that Stefan can see from the castle's corridor far away. As Maleficent goes deep into the moors, a pall of darkness follows her. And the other inhabitants of the moors are afraid of this new Maleficent. A throne grows out of a tree. As Maleficent sits on it, the other creatures bow to her at the behest of the border guards who now flank her. Diaval brings Maleficent news that Stefan now has a daughter. He says there will be a christening, which will be a grand celebration. Stefan considers that fact and he calls it wonderful. On the day of the christening, a crowd is gathered at the castle. The three pixies act as unofficial liaisons from the moors, bringing magical gifts. Stefan at first is hesitant, but the queen convinces him to allow him. Notgrass gives the baby, Aurora, the gift of beauty. Flittle gives her the gift of happy days, wishing her to never have blue days. Thistlewit is about to give Aurora her magical gift when Maleficent enters the castle. She says she was distressed when she heard about the christening and didn't receive an invitation. Stefan tells her she's not welcome, but Maleficent laughs and calls the situation awkward. The queen asks if Maleficent is angry, and she says she isn't. She says she also has gifts for Aurora. Stefan and the pixies try to stop her, but Maleficent just waves away their feeble attempts. Maleficent walks to Aurora's court and says she'll be beautiful and full of grace. She'll be loved by everyone who meets her. This pleases the queen, who says it's a lovely gift. Stefan, however, knows better. He pleads with Maleficent to not curse Aurora. Maleficent notices a spinning wheel. She says that she'll prick her finger on a spindle of a spinning wheel on her 16th birthday and fall into a death-like sleep that Aurora will never wake up from. On hearing the curse, Stefan pleads with Maleficent. At Maleficent's urging, he kneels before her and pleads with her not to curse his daughter. She adds a caveat to the curse. She says Aurora can awake if she gets a true love's kiss. Maleficent seals the curse by saying the curse will last for all time and no power can change the curse. King Stefan orders every spinning wheel in the kingdom seized, burnt, and thrown into a deep dungeon. He also entrusts the pixies to take care of his daughter. They are to take care of her until the day after her 16th birthday. Only then should she be returned. The pixies transform into human form and take Aurora to an isolated cottage. But they're incompetent when it comes to taking care of the baby. Maleficent, who's always watching, calls the baby Beastie. Stefan continues to try to capture and kill Maleficent, despite the huge wall of thorns she's created as a border. He orders his army to burn down the thorns and invade the moors. The army rejoices when they see the thorns burning, but Maleficent uses that to make the thorns come alive and defeat the army. 
When the defeated general returns to Stefan, the king's furious. He tells the general that he failed him, and that the thorn wall can't be destroyed. Stefan says nothing's indestructible, including Maleficent, in his rage. Stefan brings out a knife and uses it to stab the table. When he calms down, Stefan picks the knife up and studies it. Then he orders the general to summon all the iron workers in the kingdom. A toddler now. Aurora runs through the fields towards a cliff. The pixies are neglectful as usual, fighting amongst themselves after Maleficent plays a prank on them. Diaval, in raven form, looks to Maleficent to save Aurora. Maleficent waits until Aurora falls off the cliff before using a tree's root to rescue her. She leans against a tree as they observe Aurora. Later, Maleficent heals a tree when Aurora comes up to her. Maleficent tells her to go away. Instead, Aurora comes closer and hugs her, telling Maleficent to carry her. She does after some hesitancy. Aurora touches her horns and face. When Maleficent drops Aurora, she feels conflicted. Aurora is all grown up now, and Maleficent still watches her. Aurora cares for the animals and has a curiosity about the Wall of Thorns. Stefan also has his army laying siege at the Thorns as well. Maleficent turns Diaval into a wolf and puts Aurora into an enchanted sleep. Together with the wolf, Maleficent takes on the army. When she transforms Diaval back to human form, he's incensed because she transformed him into a wolf. He calls them dirty, vicious animals that hunt birds. And she says she'll transform him into a mealy worm next time. Maleficent transports a floating Aurora deep into the moors, hides behind a tree and rouses Aurora from her sleep. Aurora is delighted to find she's finally in the moors. She marvels at the various creatures and tries to interact with them. When the creatures notice Maleficent's presence, they flee. Aurora turns towards the tree where she's hiding and tells her not to be afraid. Maleficent laughs and tells Aurora she's not afraid. Rather, Aurora will be afraid when she comes out. When Aurora assures her she won't be afraid, Maleficent comes out of hiding and regards Aurora warily. Aurora tells Maleficent she knows who she is. She happily tells her that she's her fairy godmother. Aurora says she knows Maleficent has been watching her for a long time and sees Maleficent's shadow all the time. Maleficent puts Aurora back to sleep and leads her back to the cottage before she leaves, bidding Aurora good night. Aurora spends time with Maleficent in the moors. She introduces Aurora to creatures. And Aurora has a great time playing with them. As usual, Maleficent puts her in an enchanted sleep and takes her home. While Aurora is asleep in her bed, Maleficent tries to revoke the curse, but it doesn't work. Instead, she hears echoes of her curse, the part where she said the curse will last till the end of time and no power could break it. Another night in the moors, Aurora asks about fairies and wings. She asks why Maleficent doesn't have wings. Maleficent says she had wings once, but they were stolen from her. Aurora asks her if her wings were big, and she says they were so big they dragged behind when she walked. In the castle, Maleficent's wings are locked in a glass case. Stefan wakes up from a nightmare, proclaiming Maleficent is coming. He goes to the forge and wakes the head ironworker, commanding him to wake all the workers and keep working. Back in the moors, Aurora tells Maleficent she wants to move there and stay with her. She says she'll inform her aunts when she turns 16. Maleficent convinces her to tell them sooner. Aurora is excited by the prospect of living in the moors. On the way back home, Aurora bumps into Philip, a prince who's traveling to the castle but lost his way. There's obvious chemistry between them. Diaval tells Maleficent Philip might be the one to break Aurora's curse. Maleficent tells him there's no such thing as a true love's kiss, which is why she cursed Aurora that way. Aurora goes home and tells her aunt she's turning 16 the next day, and when she does, she's leaving home. Notgrass says the three of them will be taking Aurora back to her father. Notgrass realizes what she just said and stops mid-sentence. Aurora asks why she's mentioning a father now when they told her she didn't have parents. Little tells Aurora to sit, and they tell her everything. Unhappy with the truth, Aurora runs to the moors to talk to Maleficent. Now she realizes Maleficent is not her fairy godmother, but the one who cursed her as a baby. Maleficent tries to hug her and explain, but Aurora isn't having any of it. She calls Maleficent the evil in this world and runs away. Determined to find her father, Aurora leaves the cottage and heads towards Stefan's kingdom. 
In the castle, Stefan strategizes with his generals when one of the guards brings in Aurora. Stefan tells the guards to lock Aurora up in her room until her 16th birthday had passed. In her room, something calls to Aurora. She finds a secret door and escapes towards the voice. In the moors, Maleficent puts Philip into an enchanted sleep and turns Diaval into a horse. Maleficent gallops towards the castle with an unconscious Philip in tow. In the castle, the voice leads Aurora to the dungeon where the burned spinning wheels are kept. One of the broken spinning wheels magically reforms, and Aurora pricks her finger on its spindle. As soon as it happens, Aurora falls to the floor. Maleficent, who's close to the castle, knows the instant it happened, that Aurora had fallen into a deep sleep. When they get to the gates, the Aval tells Maleficent that they're walking into a trap. He says if they enter the castle, they won't come out alive. Maleficent tells him to leave, since it's not his fight. Within the castle, Maleficent comes to a corridor with iron thorns. She carefully maneuvers through this corridor until she delivers a sleeping Philip to Aurora's door. The pixies in the room are excited. They urge Philip to give Aurora a true love's kiss. He does, but it doesn't work. From the hiding spot, she tells Diaval she told him true love doesn't exist. Sadly, she walks towards Aurora, telling her she doesn't ask for her forgiveness because what she did was unforgivable. She was lost and consumed by hatred, and Aurora stole what was left of her heart. A crying Maleficent kisses Aurora on the forehead and turns to leave. Aurora awakes, Maleficent's love bringing her back to life. As they try to leave, Maleficent and Aurora come into the hall. It is a trap. A net of iron falls on Maleficent. As she tries to shake it off, it hurts her. Aurora tries to help her, but the soldiers push her away. Now the soldiers club at her, and Maleficent turns Diaval into a dragon. Dragon Diaval takes the net off Maleficent. Aurora escapes the scene of the carnage. The soldiers capture Diaval and hem Maleficent in with iron shields. In the room Aurora escaped to, she finds Maleficent's wings in the case. The wings are struggling to escape, so she pushes the case to the floor. The glass breaks and the wings escape. In the other hall, Stefan steps through the soldiers and beats on Maleficent with an iron chain. He's about to stab her with a sword when her wings rejoin her body. She flies above everyone and rescues Diaval. As she tries to escape the room, Stefan uses the chain to hook her leg. Maleficent flies out of the room with Stefan still hanging on. When they land, Maleficent has the opportunity to kill him, but she doesn't. She tells him it's over and goes to leave. But Stefan doesn't give up, pushing the two of them over the tower. Maleficent escapes and flies away, but Stefan falls to his death. Maleficent brings down the thorns, removes the dark pall over the moors, and relinquishes her position as Queen of the Moors. And instead, Aurora is installed as Queen of both kingdoms. Maleficent was released in 2014. The movie was produced by Walt Disney Pictures and Roth Films. Some of those that starred in the movie are Angelina Jolie, Shardo Copley, Ellie Fanning, and Juno Temple. If you had Maleficent's magical powers, what would you do with them? Tell me with the hashtag Cinema Recap in the comments.